Hello Internet, I'm called Matt, and as you probably know, because it's like every other video I upload, I've been doing movie nights for the past year. Uh, bi-weekly, although for a very brief period, weekly. So in celebration of one year, I say we break down every movie I've looked at. This is Matt's Movie Nights by the Numbers. I think we'll start with the nationality of these films. Honestly, decent international breakdown. It did lean really heavily American, which I'm not super into, but I mean, it's never not gonna lean American. I'm American. America is like the, the major distributor of films around the world. Most of the movies I've seen have been American, thus most of the movies I'm gonna end up recommending are American. Still, 11 countries were represented this year, which I think is pretty good. So in order from most movies to least movies, uh, 52 of these 87 movies were from America, which is well over half. Um, I'd like to bring that number down a bit, but uh, it's always gonna be like vast majority American. Still though, uh, Japan coming in with 11, so the only other country to break double digits. I'm not surprised at all that Japan is number two. I, I, we did several Japanese-centric triple features. Um, at least two, maybe three. I forget. Uh, seven British films. Um, just barely pulling ahead at the end there with uh, the, the Hammer Horror triple feature. China and Canada both tied with five. Not a big surprise. China's where a lot of kung fu movies come from. Uh, a lot of Chinese action movies out there. And of course Canada, you know, our neighbors to the north. Um, a lot of Canadian films could just be confused for American films. Uh, two Italian films, which is shockingly low. Um, I'm a big fan of Italian horror, but we just, we just didn't get to that many Italian movies this year. Um, and one of those, I think, was Caligula, which was an Italian production, but it starred, like, all British and American actors. And, of course, one film each for Germany, Spain, Greece, and New Zealand. And finally, one American-Philippine co-production. Filipino co-production? I guess American-Filipino co-production. Moving on, let's talk about these films' content ratings. What does the MPAA have to say about these films? Well, we watched no G-rated movies. This is not a G-rated movie night. Five PG movies, which... A lot of those are like 70s and 80s PG, where it's like... Kinda not appropriate for kids, but... It still ended up with a PG back in the day. Uh, six PG-13 movies. Uh, I'm a little surprised PG-13 only beat PG out by one. But considering I didn't show that many of either, uh, maybe it's not that much of a surprise. 40 R-rated films. Obviously the majority. Almost half. Uh, a little under half, actually or rated R, one X-rated film. I'm surprised it was only one. But then again, there's 28 unrated and not rated movies, which on the one hand, that accounts for a lot of like older movies and foreign movies that just like haven't been rated by the MPAA. But it's also extremely violent movies that couldn't pass with a, an R rating, you know. It also includes, I think, two, but maybe three movies that had an R rating, but I showed the unrated version of. Um, and that's just largely dependent upon what I have available to me. Uh, and finally, seven approved or past films from back in the uh, MPA, uh, back in the Hayes Code era. So... A couple older movies in there getting no ratings, but yeah, that's probably about the spread I expected. It, PG and PG-13 are a little closer than I thought they'd be, but everything else is like 
Yeah, it checks out. So let's talk about one of the more surprising breakdowns. Uh, what years these films were released in, or at least which decades these were released in. There were two films from the 30s, two films from the 40s, four films from the 50s, five films from the 60s, 26 films from the 70s, 23 films from the 80s, six films from the 90s, 11 movies from the 2000s, and seven movies from the 2010s. Now, I expected this to bunch up right around the 70s and 80s. That makes sense to me, although I'm a little surprised 70s took 80s by that much. Uh, 70s and 80s is just the era of film I really like. Um, especially for, like, fun, cheesy, exploitation-y stuff, which is a lot of what this show was. More surprisingly is that there were only six 90s movies. Like, I was expecting a bit of a bell curve. Like, uh, 70s and 80s were the height, and then the further you got from the 70s and 80s, the fewer films there would be. But no, both the 2000s and the 2010s overtook the 90s. I just didn't show many 90s movies, which is weird, because, like, the 2000s was kind of a trash era for film. How did I end up showing 11 movies from that decade? That's odd. The, it's, it's odd that there were that many more 2000s movies and 2010 movies, because I felt like this was a lot of, like, older, classic stuff, and I wasn't doing too many modern films, but I ended up with more films from the 2010s than I did the 1990s. I, I don't know what to say. It just kind of surprised me that it broke down that way. But, of course, those aren't the fun numbers. Let's talk about the fun numbers. Let's try to quantify exactly how sleazy the films I showed were. Starting, of course, with the body count. 1,181 dead bodies. That's uh, all humans. Uh, the, the only stipulation I had is that they either had to, like, die on screen or be implied to have just died off screen. I wasn't counting skeletons. If someone just walks up to a skeleton, doesn't count. That's not a dead body that's been there for too long. It also probably would have jacked the body count up by another, like, thousand. Because, you know, there's movies like House of a Thousand Corpses... Where the guy literally has, like, entire caverns full of, like, skulls and skeletons. Uh, we're not counting those. We're only counting the people that die while we're present. I also don't know how I would count aliens in this. Luckily, there weren't any noticeable alien deaths this year. I think we only watched one movie that really had aliens in it. Uh... But I, I, I didn't count alien deaths. There was a sentient turkey that died. And I don't know if that should count for the body count. Because it is a sentient creature who got killed. So... Mm, I'll leave that one up to you. That's an average body count of 13.6 per movie. Um, which, I mean, breaks double digits, but it still seems a little low. I'd kind of like to push that average up a little, you know? If you assume a 90-minute runtime for each movie, which sounds reasonable, that's, an av that's a dead body on average every 6 minutes and 37 seconds. And then there's the nudity. 379 tits, including two disembodied tits. And I, I want to clarify, this is individual tits. Um, you would be amazed how many movies have an odd number of tits in them. You might notice that is an odd number. We don't see both tits in every single movie, so we're counting each individual tit here. Uh, I also decided um, pictures of tits count, but paintings or drawings of tits do not. Um... Although I might have to roll that back if we ever watched an animated movie. Um, we didn't. We were no animation this year, so... 
not something I had to worry about, but yeah, it had to be real tits. It had to be either a picture of a tit. Uh, there's a lot of paintings on the walls with tits in them in some of these movies, and I'm not counting those. And just so the fellas don't feel left out, 48 penises. 40 of which were from Caligula. So without Caligula, it would be eight. That's... And that was the second movie I showed. So, like, setting the bar high early on penises. Still, uh, ex excluding that, eight penises is a lot. Like, it's not surprising for, like, an R-rated movie to have tits in it. Tits are a pretty common thing to show up in R-rated movies. The penis is not so much. Uh, you see a penis in a film, that's, that's kind of rare. And I think it did mostly come from unrated movies. So let's talk about drugs. How many drugs were consumed throughout these movies? Well, they smoked 15 joints, 3 bowls of weed, 1 tie stick. They did 10 lines of cocaine, 1 10 foot long line of cocaine. 10 cocaine bumps, uh, one of those, like, rubbing the cocaine on the gums things, four pills full of cocaine, and three lines of blood-infused cocaine. Because they were, like, werewolves. Ten tabs of PCP, ten unidentified pills, six counts of chemical huffing, five bottles of cold medicine, Four downers, four peyote-infused drinks, three shots of heroin, two tabs of LSD, one pipe full of crack, one psychedelic mushroom, and one pipe of opium. And then, of course, the most ubiquitous drug, alcohol. Now, for an alcoholic drink to count, someone had to take a sip of it on screen and at least have been implied to finish it. Because there's a lot of movies where, like, a character's, like, holding a beer, and then they just sit there holding the beer and not drinking it. <laughs> there's also a lot of movies where someone will, like, take a sip of a drink, set it down, and then, like, walk off and never finish it. So you had to start drinking it and implied to have finished drinking it. Which brings us to a total of 99 beers. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I was watching Detroit 9000, and someone drank a beer, and I'm like, that's number 99. No one can drink any more beer. And no one did. It was 99 beers for the first year. Mmm, amazing. 46 glasses of wine, one full bottle of wine, and one shoe full of wine. 34 shots of whiskey, one half full bottle of whiskey, and two full bottles of whiskey. 31 shots of tequila, 21 glasses of champagne, and one entire bottle of champagne. 11 glasses of scotch, 11 glasses of vodka, two vodka and blood cocktails, and one accidental vodka and blood cocktail. The blood, the, the vodka and blood cocktails were uh, John Carradine in Vampire Hookers having a sip of a, a blood and vodka, but then in Slugs, a guy is drinking vodka and he starts bleeding into the vodka and he just keeps drinking the vodka with his own blood in it. So, yeah, three vodka and blood cocktails. Eight ales, six glasses of cognac, three glasses of sake, six glasses of poisoned sake, four malt liquors, two bourbons, two swigs of moonshine, one half jar of moonshine, one glass of cooking sherry, one glass of rum, one highball, nine unidentified shots, five unidentified cocktails, 31 swigs out of unidentified bottles, and one very dry martini and make it a double. And that's just what I drank. <laughs> then there's destroyed vehicles. Uh, I was just going to do destroyed cars, but then I'm like, well, what about, like, helicopters and airplanes? I bet there's going to be a lot of those, too. As it turned out, a lot of boats got destroyed. Uh, so let's go down the destroyed vehicles. 159 cars. That number more than doubled thanks to Mighty Peking Man. 
literally the last movie night. There's just a scene of Peking Man destroying a car garage that doubled my number. Uh, one truck, two semi-trucks, one motorcycle, three vans, six jeeps, one oil tanker, one tank, one train, one trolley, three airplanes, three helicopters, one ocean liner, eight boats, one jet ski, one submarine, 14 flying saucers, and five spaceships. And of course, all the glorious swearing. I have kept track of all seven of George Carlin's words you can't say on TV. Although, I've taken out motherfucker and replaced it with bitch because motherfucker is just another form of fuck. That doesn't count. That's, it's not a new word. So, all of the motherfuckers are listed under fuck, and we've added bitch to the list. This is probably the one that I got wrong. Uh, like, I was very thorough with counting dead bodies and, like, checking on the nudity. Swearing is really easy to miss. Like, sometimes it just flies right past you. Especially tits, because tits is not a word I consider offensive. So when I hear it, I don't immediately go, Hey, that's one of them swear words I'm supposed to be counting. Uh, that being said, this is what I counted. These numbers might be a little low. 1,208 uses of the word fuck. That sounds like a lot, but a handful of movies are doing the heavy lifting there. In fact, uh, the night I showed the Rob Zombie triple feature, it, it more than doubled what I had currently had up to that point. Uh, I, had, I had like under 350 before and over 700 afterwards. So those three Rob Zombie movies... Plus, like, Tenacious D and The Pick of Destiny and, and Fear of a Black Hat. Uh, they're carrying most of the weight of that 1,208 fucks. Most movies I showed, I think, didn't even use the word. So, there's that to consider. 397 uses of the word shit. 18 uses of the word piss. 9 uses of the word cunt. Three uses of the word cocksucker. 179 uses of the word bitch. That's when they slipped into a lot of old movies before they really used the fuck word that much. And 20 uses of the word tits. If you're looking for a little more mayhem, 21 crotch shots, including one self-crotch shot, and 124 broken windows, including one window smashing another window. <laughs> Thanks, The Omen. Um, smashed windows seems to be the one consistent across all these movies, outside of dead bodies. Um, most movies I showed, someone smashed a window somewhere. Dead bodies is the other consistent. The only movies I showed that I think had no dead bodies were Flying Ryan and Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. No dead bodies in either of those films. Um, Flying Ryan, in fact, I believe is the only movie that hit none of these. And it might have hit one. I, I don't know if it... It might have had, like, a smashed window or something. But uh, compared to the others, Flying Ryan is the only one that hit... Almost none of these categories, and that's probably because it's a children's film, and none of the other movies I showed were children's films, but, eh, I wanted to show Fly and Ryan. And finally, we get to the two shit categories I had, gay shit and satanic shit. Uh, these can be a little nebulous to define, because to me, two people kissing is one count of gay shit, but also a character just saying they're gay is one count of gay shit. And it's kind of like, how does this stack up? Um, I can't really justify what I counted as gay shit and what I didn't count as gay shit. Satanic shit, it was almost always just like one thing per movie. Like, you can only have one satanic shit per movie. Like, if you're trying to summon Satan and Satan shows up, that's one satanic shit. I believe I gave two to Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny because they attempt to summon Satan 
and then later Satan shows up, but those two incidents are independent of each other. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. The Satanism has to be independent of each other, whether it's someone using satanic powers, Satan himself showing up, or, or a character going to hell. That all counts as satanic shit, but if they're all interconnected, if they're all related, doesn't count. It, it only counts for one. That being said, 36 counts of gay shit and 31 counts of satanic shit, which means nearly 30 movies, nearly 30 of the 87 movies I showed somehow involved Satanism. <laughs> that's, that's the quality of movies I show. Nearly 30 overtly satanic movies in some shape or form. Because I, I also counted, like, a character, like, throwing out tarot cards and they drew the devil. That counts, even if the devil's not really in the movie. And that's a wrap on year one of Matt Presents Movie Nights. Those are the numbers, and frankly, I'm happy with a lot of those numbers. There's a few I'd like to bump up, maybe a few I could push down. You know, I'd like a bit more international spread. Um, also would like to show more 90s movies. I was surprised at how few of those there were. And if I can help it, I would really like to push up the average body count, but I guess that's not really in my hands. I mean, I, I could pick movies I know have really high body counts, but... Nah, I'm just gonna pick whatever I want and let the chips fall where they may. So, to another year of Matt's Movie Nights, have a nice day.